Just this week, Gallup came out with a poll that showed that 70% of people are unhappy in their workplace. True or false, I would be happier if. <laughs> Deloitte doubled my salary. So if you think that's true, raise your hand. Awesome. Clinical psychologist Elizabeth Lombardo has written Better Than Perfect. Hey, how are so you? So nice to see you again. Good to be back. Thank you to Dr. Lombardo. Dr. Elizabeth Lombardo. It's easier to type than to talk. And you, you say different things when you're typing, when you're not looking at someone face to face than you ever would if you were looking at them. Definitely. I, I agree with that. You cannot create an environment that is truly open to diversity unless you address unconditional self-worth. Because otherwise people are so threatened by differences. I like to think that what I do is I teach people how to be happy despite years of practice. When you practice the right skills of happiness, you literally can't help but be happy. It's impossible not to be happy. Let's pretend that I'm afraid of the dark, okay? And the lights go out, all power goes off, and it is pitch black, and I start freaking out. What could I do to help myself? Turn the light on. Light a candle. Oh, yeah. Have a shot of tequila. <laughs> we're, we're just generating, you know, solutions here, so if you have that, I, you know, just give it a try, yeah. Gratitude is a muscle, and the more you use it, the easier it gets. But the beauty is being better than perfect is actually less stress than perfectionism. Because being better than perfect means you take all the good of perfectionism in terms of, of stretching yourself and, and going for the A+. Plus. We're not going for a C- minus here. We're going for the A+, plus, getting the most out of you and your team. But at the same time, without that inner critic taking over. When you get an outcome that you do not want, instead of beating yourself up, ask why. What were the ingredients that went into this outcome? How can I learn from it? How can I change? How can I use this to make things even better? It's not failure, it's data. There's a difference between looking at someone else and then really comparing your worth to them. Because how you view yourself and your worthiness impacts every single interaction that you have. But when we're happier, we're more thoughtful, we're more compassionate, we're kinder, we're much more patient which allows us to be better parents and better spouses and better friends and better members of the community because we're more likely to help out other people. One of the biggest disruptions to happiness and to really fulfillment is entitlement. So giving your children certain responsibilities and holding them accountable and letting them be proud when they do it is really, is really a gift to give to them. When you have unconditional self-worth, you give yourself permission and your team permission to take calculated risks. Calculated risks. You're not so fearful of failure. You put yourself out there and you let your team do it too. And that allows you to make the biggest impact possible. Happiness is your choice. You get to decide if you want to be happier. You get to decide how you view the world and you get to decide if you get all of the benefits. And what's key to remember is sometimes we can't change the problem itself, but we always, always, have the opportunity to change your emotional reaction. Post-election stress disorder is a real phenomenon that a lot of people are experiencing right now. You're clapping. You're letting her know that was so wonderful. Why is calm the new happy? Home is the new happy because as we get older, our definition of happiness actually changes. Happiness hangovers, that's a real thing. It's a real thing. Right. So, there, you know, we, we anticipate events and we're mm -hmm. so excited about it. The buildup is great and then they happen and it's, ugh, now what? Research shows that when we have positive relationships, we actually live longer. So it's a gift for yourself. Take accountability for what you did so that you can move on. Elizabeth Lombardo, good tips. Thank you so Thank much. You. It was a great presentation in as much that it's a topic which really resonates, I think, with all of us. Uh, well presented, energetic, it was just great fun. I thought that she did a fabulous job. She did really good at keeping everybody engaged um, and really getting people to open up. I thought she was fantastic. She had some really great insight and I'm really looking forward to buying her book. 
Dr. Elizabeth Lombardo delivered a really important message to our people today in talking about how happiness affects your ability to do great work. She gave some real practical tips that our people will take away and implement on a daily basis. She was really wonderful. She brought a lot of energy and humor, which really helped our audience to connect with her. We all have an inner critic. Our goal is to crush that inner critic, to create the life that you want. And instead of focusing on being perfect, always remember that you are better than perfect. Thank you so very much.